it's a little more visual, I think. Ten, ten, let's try that again. Hi everybody! Welcome to The Paper Magpie on YouTube. My name is Leela and I would like to talk to you about something very important. And as cheesy as that sounds, it actually is really very important. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about something called filling the well. And this is gonna be pretty quick because I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory once you kind of get the initial definition, but by all means, if you have more questions, let me know. I can do a longer video, whatever you guys want. But I just wanted to introduce this concept to those of you who aren't familiar with it. So I became familiar with the idea of filling the well through um, Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way, which I have mentioned here before. I know that I've talked to you guys about the fact that I did it and that, you know, I didn't do a class or anything. I just did the book and, um, well, got the book and, and went through and did it myself. So life-changing, first of all, but one of the most important things was that doing The Artist's Way helped me in a lot of huh, ways one of which was in forgiving myself. As a lifelong perfectionist, I've always had that if it's not gonna be perfect the first time, don't do it kind of mentality. And that's counterproductive, it really is. I mean, I speak to you as a perfectionist, you already know this about me because we've been through it, but it really is. So filling the well is kind of, well, think about yourself as a vessel for creativity. Just like any other vessel, you've got a certain storage capacity you're not bottomless unless you're one of those very rare people who is and then you know good for you i'm very jealous but that's exceedingly rare most of us myself included have a capacity but i found that for writers the well i mean if you're an artist you've got you know a capacity to create things and then you kind of get tired and you have to stop if you so for visual artists dancers artists you know painters and stuff like that they there tends to be a well, you know, you you use your creativity and then you kind of, not so much burn out because most people are smart enough to not go that far, but you know, you kind of need a break and you take a break and then you, you know, go out in nature or whatever. And I find that for writers, the well consists of two elements. There's the creative side, which is the same thing that we share with the artists and the dancers and all that other stuff. And then there's the information side, which I think is incredibly important I would argue to writers more than to any other type of artist, and here's why. If you're writing about something, and something crops up, and it needs to happen in your story, you know that it does, but you don't know anything about it other than the fact that it needs to happen, that lack of juice in the information side of your well can seriously mess up the flow on the creative side. So if you've been writing every day, you're totally consistent, you're doing a great job, you're really building that habit, and then something happens and you need to learn more in order to make it happen in your book so that you don't, or your story or whatever it is, so that you don't sound like you're just pulling stuff out of... Anyway, you need to do some learning. So, and sometimes this can mean that if you're missing information or you're in the process of learning what you need to move forward, you end up dropping the ball on writing every day. And if you're like me, you'll instantly feel a rush of overwhelming guilt like you've done something wrong, like, you know, because you know that you need to be serious about writing and you need to do it every day. And it is important to establish a writing practice. We've been through that. You know the drill. But it's also vital to remember that you are not a machine. And sometimes you need to take a break. That's true of everybody in everything. Sometimes you just need a break. Either to learn, to refill, your creative or your informational well or both sometimes you need to do both to be able to keep going with your art and 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 taking a break to refill that well is better than stopping and letting yourself stay burnt out and never going back to it so taking a break and restarting is much better than stopping and giving up so that's you know it's okay for you to to take some time more often than not your work is going to be stronger for those little bits of time a day a week or two sometimes a month or more, whatever it is that you need, you know, when you take a little time away, as long as you're not completely away, 
you know, it's not because, I mean, at least for me, when I go away from a story, if I'm, if I'm learning or if I'm refilling my creative well, it's not that I'm leaving the story compartmentalized and completely out of whatever it is that I'm doing. The story is always there, chugging around back here. And as you go out in life and have experiences and do things, and maybe things that you're not used to doing, maybe things that you are used to doing but you're seeing in a different way or whatever it is when you combine those life experiences with the ever lingering thoughts of your story floating around in your brain they will often combine in ways that you could never expect and result in you seeing your story in a totally different light and it can help you break through what's holding you back and if you need i don't know an analogy for how that works for any of you guys who watch house did you ever notice how he dr house is trying and trying and trying to diagnose something and then some completely random conversation will give him what he needs to figure out this ridiculously complex hidden diagnosis. It's kind of the same thing. I love House by the way. But it's kind of the same thing. You, you go out and you have experiences and you have conversations and you meet people and you do things and those things can all come back into your story. And if you're finding yourself stuck, if you're finding yourself at a pause or if there's information that you need in order to get to the next piece of your story, take the time you need, figure out what it is that you're missing, whether it's something you know you need to learn or if you're just like, ah, oh, I just, I'm burned out, I need, to, I need to stop, I need to put my brain elsewhere, either of those things is fine. So this is all to say that filling the well, letting yourself get those experiences, getting those, you know, whether it's a walk in nature, a concert, a play, skateboarding, a movie, like reading a book. I mean, anything that takes you into another mindset can kick your creative mind into doing something that you may not have done without it. So take the time if you need it to refill that well. This applies for any kind of artist, but again, for writers, especially if you need information, do the research and don't feel guilty about it because you can't move forward on your story at all if you don't know what you're talking about. Unless you're okay with not knowing what you're talking about, in which case, you know, go for it. I myself, I like to know what I'm talking about. Uh, case in point, one of the, one of the characters in the book that I'm writing now has a very fast acting cancer of the brain. And I knew that this character needed to get cancer, but I've never had cancer. I don't know that much about it. And I was lucky enough I am lucky enough to know somebody who did survive brain cancer uh, at a young age. So I was able to talk to him to kind of go through, you know, not only how does this cancer behave, what kinds of cancer are very quick killing, inoperable, um, can get caught, well not caught, but young people can get it. Um, and then on the flip, so there's the, you know, the nuts and bolts of how that works and then there's also the what does it feel like to you know how did you end up in the hospital in the first place what does it feel like to get that diagnosis what do you do after like is it all paperwork is it all crying is it all driving to different oncologists is it all of the above i didn't know any of that stuff so that's research that i had to do i'm at a point now where i can move forward i haven't written i haven't met my word count goal in a about a week now because I've been learning and I've been kind of pecking away at it but I haven't been maintaining my practice so starting today I will be able to you know move forward I've got all the information I need I can get going on that story and I'm I'm having a hard time jumping back into it because honestly I don't want to kill this character I'm not George R.R. R. Martin despite also having two middle initials in the last name Martin <laughs> but I I really don't want to kill this person, but I have to because this person's death is the linchpin to get the protagonist to do what she needs to do to move forward, to, you know, crest the story, and and it needs to happen. So I'm struggling with that, I think, today. I don't know if I'll kill this person today, but within the next week or two, this character will be dead. I'm trying very hard to not use any gender pronouns, <laughs> just so the people who, are been, who have been reading chapters don't know who it is. Um, but yeah, so I'm having a hard time. I had to take time away to fill the well and I'm still having a hard time jumping back in because I've got an emotional connection. So 
everybody's journey is going to be different, everybody's creativity is a little bit different, but if you're finding yourself stagnating in your creativity, whatever project it is that you're working on, you're kind of like at a dead end, take the time away. Go for a hike, go for a swim, go rock climbing, whatever it is that can kind of jolt you out of your funk. Did you guys hear say that truck? Anyway, jolt you out of your funk and get back into your art with a fresh perspective. So if you guys have any questions, hit me down below and I will see you again soon. Bye.